Welcome to the first module of Air Potato Patrol Training. My name is Dr. William Lester and I am with the University of Florida IFAS Extension in Hernando County, Florida. Today we're going to go through a brief overview of the air potato plant, how it got here, why it is such a problem, and some of the ways we have tried to control the plant up until now. In this module we will explain what citizen science is and outline our goals for this program. We will cover an overview of the air potato plant, where it came from, why it is such a problem, and how Floridians have been trying to control it. The Air Potato Patrol program is designed to be citizen science in action. Our goal is to close the gap between the people who are affected by air potato and the scientists who are working on a solution. And we can't find a solution to this problem without your help. So thank you for your willingness to get involved with this program. Feel free to contact us with any questions you might have, and please don't think that we're all mad scientists working in state labs. This program was developed as a collaborative effort between the Florida Department of Agriculture and University of Florida IFAS Extension. Our goals for this program are to give you the training and knowledge needed to identify air potato vine properly, aid with basic observational data collection, and to basically let us know what is happening with the plants and air potato beetles on your property. You will better understand the seasonality of air potato vines and the beetles that feed on them and how to better control this invasive plant in your yard. This information is important for researchers to know so that release efforts of the air potato beetle can be better targeted and new control programs can be developed. The air potato is a vining perennial plant that can grow to be quite large. They can grow to a length of 65 feet and under ideal conditions they can grow 8 inches per day. When the vines find an upright tree or bush, they use it for support and can overwhelm other plants, shading them out. Because of its ability to displace native species and disrupt natural processes such as fire and water flow, air potato has been listed as one of Florida's most invasive plant species since 1993 and was placed on the federal noxious weed list by the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services in 1999. The air potato is not native to Florida or any other part of the United States. It is an invasive plant that came here from parts of Africa and Asia. This means that the insects, animals, and diseases that would normally control its growth in its native habitat are not present here to keep the plant under control. Because of this, air potato is generally not bothered by insects or animal grazing here in Florida and grows extremely well. It was introduced to Florida in 1905 and has spread across the state since then. As you can see from this map, air potato is not restricted to only Florida. It is currently regulated by the state of Alabama along with Florida. The plant spreads very easily by something called a bowl bill. A bowl bill according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, is a tiny secondary bulb that forms in the angle between a leaf and stem or in place of flowers on certain plants. Bulbils, called offsets when full-sized, fall or are removed and planted to produce new plants. They are especially common among such plants as onions and lilies. These bulbils can be spread easily by human activities, infected soil, animals, and moving water. For anyone who has air potato growing on their property, you know firsthand how hardy and fast growing the vines can be during the warm season in Florida. This plant is hardy under a wide variety of growing and soil conditions, including seasonally flooded areas and acidic low fertility soils. During the winter and colder areas, the vines will totally die back and freeze, resuming growth in the spring. The above ground bulbils bills produced by the vines are the major means of dispersal for air potato, but the underground tubers ensure the plant's survival year to year and make the plant difficult to control. The bulbils can easily be spread through contaminated brush, soil, or lawn equipment, and there is even speculation that birds can move the plants from one area to another, but this has not yet been proven. Some residents actually like air potato in the urban landscape because it is so fast growing and hardy. But when the plant moves into undeveloped areas, it can crowd out native species and form a monoculture. 
This smothers native vegetation and reduces diversity of native species. When the vines climb into trees, they can disrupt the action of fire in ecosystems and now beneficial control burns will move up into the tree canopy and destroy the trees. Air potato vine has become a major problem in Florida due to the fact that nothing here eats it. Native Florida animals don't graze on it, none of our insects eat it, and there are few, if any, disease pathogens that will attack it. So air potato is in the perfect environment here, far away from its natural controls, to spread with little to stop its spread. One way researchers have found to control this plant is with the import and release of the air potato beetle. We will discuss the air potato leaf beetle in much greater detail in Module 4. So in conclusion, air potato is a problem plant that came here from other parts of the world. It has caused serious environmental issues and has been very costly to control so far. We need our volunteers from around the state of Florida to give us information about what is happening with air potato and the air potato beetles on their property so that we could better understand how the air potato beetle lives, breeds, and feeds on these plants. This real-time data from around the state will aid us in developing new control strategies and a better plan air potato rearing to better meet the needs of Florida residents. We would like to thank the USDA APHIS for funding the mass rearing and release of the air potato beetle.